blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. When we come and when we go, we cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. When we come and when we go, we cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. When we go, we cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. Poverty must cease, for 
the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're, so We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the
Can we do that right now? Can we call upon that name? That wonderful name, that saving name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. God, you're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Oh, there's power in that name. There's power in that name. Come on, it's all right. You can let the Holy Ghost move. Sometimes that's all you need to do is call that name. Sometimes that's all you need to say. You, you're thinking too hard about what you need to say to God. Just call upon His name and you'll be surprised. <laughs> surprised. Praise God. You know, it's good to see everyone here this morning. Praise the Lord. You know, we, we've just come through uh, another year, entering into the new one. And I, I know every, every, every New Year's, and everybody can vouch that there's always somebody who talks about change. Some of us need change. Change is good. Change can be bad also. depends on what you change to, is it for the better or for the worse. But us being human, we do need to change. I, I, every day I ask God to change something in me. There's something that's not right. There's something that maybe not pleasing to him. I need to change. But I heard something today that says, you know, we may change and things may change in 2021. Some for the good and some for the worse. But I can tell you one thing that never changes, and that's God. No matter, come on, no matter, no, no matter what administration, what political view you have, it's not going to stop God in 2021 from saving somebody's soul, for filling with the Holy Ghost, for having revival. Come on. Aren't you glad you save a God that doesn't change? Aren't you glad God didn't make a New, a New Year's resolution saying, I'm not answering no more prayer. All I want this year is praise. Come on. Aren't you glad God ain't like us? Man, some of us get, get, get mad and get an attitude. And <laughs> well, if God was like us, like I said, we, some of us would be in trouble. God said, I ain't going to answer any more prayer this year. Nothing but praise, no matter what happens. No matter how bad it gets, I want you to praise me. God's going to answer prayer in 2021. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost in 2021. God's going to get his church ready in 2021. 
God's getting this church ready now. Can we praise Him this morning? Jesus, hallelujah, amen, is God giving you a testimony, amen, praise God, amen, amen, so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, amen, thank God he's still a prayer answering God in 2021, amen, right brother Boudreaux, amen, he still answers prayers. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's lift up Brother Walker. Amen. 
Tosca Heard is in need of a touch from God. Cynthia Hoffpower, amen. Kai Lee is in need of a touch from God. The Bro family, amen. Brother Daryl and Sister Julie, Garrett Hoffpower, amen. We got a whole lot of prayer needs there, but we have a whole lot of God, amen. Praise God. Amen. If you have a special need, signify those by the raising of your hands. Amen. We got a lot of special needs as well. But God knows and God cares. Amen. Amen. And if you want prayer this morning, we invite you to come forward. We will anoint you with oil as the word of God says. Join me in taking all of our needs to God this morning. Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, we trust in you to meet the needs. You know all of them, Lord. We know that you are more than able to touch and heal bodies, Lord God. And we ask for your healing virtue this morning, Jesus, over every need, whether spoken or unspoken, Lord. You are more than able, Lord, to touch the brokenhearted, to touch the homes, Lord to change the hearts and the minds of those lost folks, Lord God. I ask Jesus that you pour out your spirit, Lord God, whether in the church, the homes, the prisons, the hospitals, Lord. We ask that you move Jesus Christ. Oh, we lift you up and we praise your mighty name today, Jesus. We give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. You may be seated as our ushers come forward to assist with tithes and offerings this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. Lord, I ask that you will bless these tithes, these offerings, make them overflow as only you can. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. so many of you including us are so excited to ring in that new year but don't forget we do still have some cool church events going on stay tuned to start us off on the right foot this year we do have prayer for our ladies on january 8th at 7 p.m it will be at sister lee's house bring your favorite refreshment your favorite snack and if you have any questions make sure to see sister leah for those we do have something for the head honchos. Los hombres, the men. Men, you do have men's prayer on January 30th at 8 a.m. at the church. Be there or be square. And this is for our youth who plan on going to NAYC 2021 North American Youth Conference. The hotels early booking are this Monday, the 4th. So we do need a head count. If you plan on going, please let Sister Gotro know and make sure we have a spot for you and you don't want to miss it. And last but not least, this is for the whole family. Every single Monday, starting tomorrow, January 4th, we will be having family prayer at the church at 7 p.m. and we hope to see you there. That is all so far to our guests. Thank you so much for being here with us. We are so honored and pleased to have you. And to our regulars, we love you guys so much and we can't wait to spend another year with y'all. Let's worship. Now, just a clarification on the NAYC hotel booking. If you think you're interested in going, let me know. And we can just put it down. We can also always cancel. It's not like firm reservations. But if you think you're interested in going to NAYC, adults, if you need to chaperone and you feel that need to chaperone, let us know. We will be raising money to help offset the cost of all of the registration and hotel. So don't worry about the money. Just be willing to work. Okay. We're going to do a new song, and it's a, 
It's a unique song, and it might take you a time or two to love it. It depends on your personality. But I want you to think about somebody famous. What are, in, that, in your mind, what is that person famous for? Now I want you to go back 2,000 years. Who was famous? Who was the name being ushered in the streets? What was he famous for? Worship with us as we sing. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress over and over. I have a hope found in your name. I have a strength found in your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. Oh, Lord, make way through the waters, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouth of liars, drink dry bones to lie. God, I believe in you. Release your love inside of me. Unleash your power for all to see. Spirit, come fall on us over and over. Oh, Lord, make way through. What you are famous for Shut the mouth of lions Bring dry bones to life And do what you are famous for What you are famous for Make way through the waters Walk me through the fire Do what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouth of lions Bring dry bones to life and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think. Lord, you will never your name. Your name is powerful, your word is unstoppable. What you are famous for Make way through the waters Walk me through the fire Do what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring dry bones to life And do what you are famous for What you are famous for In you I have seen faithfulness 
it is my fortress oh, over and over. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to glorify the name of the Lord in this place today. Somebody ought to glorify the magnificent name of the Lord today. Oh, just take a moment out to magnify him and exalt him today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. If I comprehend the infallible word of the Lord correctly, in my experience and my relationship with the Lord, he grants me the privilege to live my life in the midst of the victory and the defeats to stand in triumph. In understanding the word of the Lord, the, the shift from the left to the right, the shift from the good to the bad, the shift from the up and the downs, the rich and the poor, God allows me in my relationship to keep my status equal. He allows me in my frustration and in my encouragement to maintain the same spirituality because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so because things go good, I worship and I rejoice in the Lord. And because things don't always go so good, I worship and I magnify the Lord. My relationship with the Lord overcomes this time frame called earth. My relationship with the Lord is an eternal relationship with God. It is not fluctuating because if it's a good day or a bad day, he's still the same. The Holy Ghost still keeps me. That's why we need the Comforter, amen, because the Comforter knows that there are going to be some days that I'm going to need some comfort, and some days I'm not going to need no comfort. But still, in my relationship with the Lord, in my walk with God, I can stay and be steadfast and can be encouraged, and I can come and rejoice every service, not because everything's well, but because because he has all the power and might in the palm of his hand. Oh, hallelujah. Greet your neighbor, bump them with your elbow, however, just don't hurt them. Glad to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Praise God. I sense in the very near future a tremendous burden coming to this pulpit. I sense conviction that is coming down the pipe of heaven if the Lord tarries tremendous amounts of conviction. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm getting too comfortable in my walk. I appreciate the presence of the Lord. Amen. I appreciate rejoicing. We're going to rejoice today. I said, we're going to rejoice today. Well, you need to be praying for your pastor to come to this pulpit to tell you something that will carve the very depths of your soul out and cause you to come and take some, some, some uh, evaluation and some, some pictures to see where we are at in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. It's not all about just coming to the house of the, God, of the Lord. I'm glad about that. Amen. But there's got to be, I, I, I'm not worried about you being saved on Sunday. I'm worried about folks being saved on Friday. Well, maybe I ought to pull one of those sermons out right now. <laughs> Amen. I love and appreciate you. Amen. The goodness of the Lord is in this place. Mr. Retta, we're so glad to have you this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're honored to have you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to have each and every one of you here today serving and worshiping the Lord today. We have a slew of folks that are sick, and we are fixing. I know we prayed for them 
already, but we're fixing to come against that spirit of sickness that has uh, been afflicted upon the church. Amen. That is trying to halt. We've had we we we've had the the virus that that and it's real and the symptoms are real to some folks. Some folks are not as extreme. Amen. But the kingdom of God is wrapping up. Amen. The end time is moving fast prophecies are unfolding uh, the coming of the Lord is at hand and I don't want to get caught sleeping I don't want to get caught just twiddling my thumbs about the affairs of life and my personal welfare and my personal cares to where I miss what the Lord is doing I'm going to encourage you amen if, if you're looking for a tickling of your ear preaching amen you might want to resign from this church because I'm going to preach hell and brimstone. I'm going to preach the coming of the Lord. I'm going to preach the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to preach that God is able to sustain you and stabilize you and spiritualize you. And I'm not trying to be ugly today. But folks, we've been in this long enough. We need to mature. Amen. We've been in this long enough. We don't have to come to church and we have to be encouraged and pumped to have church. You ought to just know how to have church. Amen. You ought to be willing to have church. Amen. You need church. Amen. You need to respond and see what God is going to do. Amen. And I have always utilized, especially in my younger days, utilized the benefits of the church. <laughs> Amen. I, 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 I needed God more when I was younger probably, I feel like, than I need him now. Amen. Because I'm more consistent now than I was when I was younger. Uh, when I was young, I, I'd done the things of youth. Amen. I, I, I was even able to run. Some of you missed that. That's all right. Amen. I, I'm glad today for the privilege of coming to the house of the Lord. When you come to God's house, you can get encouragement. When you come to God's house, you can get victory. When you come to God's house, you, you don't. Unless you're unwilling to lay it down, amen, you can come heavy and just dismiss that at the altar and leave knowing that the Lord is taking care of some things. That's why we come to the house of the Lord because in the unity of the body of Christ, the worship and the presence of the Lord, anything is possible. Amen. Miracles are among us. Healing is among us. Victory is among us. Amen. And I am so grateful for the presence of the Lord. Amen. This morning I come to you with casting what I believe is the theme for this remaining year. I'm not one that casts themes. I'm not one to step every brand new year and uh, project certain things for the upcoming year. Amen. However, I did feel in my spirit, I told you we're going to wear that first song out. We're going to sing about, uh, about being uh, thankful for what the Lord is doing. Amen to counting our blessings. I'm going to be preaching in just a moment on counting our blessings. Amen. I want to tell you how to get advanced in life. I want to tell you how to better make, make your ends meet in life. I want to tell you how to, how to have strength in your relationships in life. I want to tell you how to wake up in the morning and have bigger smiles on your face in your life. Amen. It comes from the infallible word of the Lord. We are grateful for that word, and that word will transform us if we will let it. Now, before I go to the preaching of the word of the Lord, let me encourage you to, uh, every other year we, we collectively read the, the Bible through and through as a congregation. Then we have an off year where we allow folks to read at their leisure the word of the Lord and at their spiritual assignment. Uh, this year we are reading the Bible through. If you've gotten the text and you would like to join in, amen, we're not, we're not trailing you. We don't know if you read or you don't read. Don't get nervous. Somebody said, oh, not me, Pastor. No, everything I do, and if I miss one word, one verse, no, no I'm, not, I'm not doing it. We're not going to know. Amen. It's just there's reminders on there that reminds you to, you can listen and read alone, or you can read, or you can listen, whatever your preferences are. Amen. Uh, I, I find that as my eyes dim, amen, that I, I, I appreciate the 
of both combinations of reading the word and also having the privilege of listening as I read and uh, whatever avenue allows you to ingest more of the word of the Lord is the avenue that you should choose amen it is about gleaming from the word of the Lord so I encourage you to read your Bibles through let me also put a burden upon this church this morning Amen. I, I, I'm not looking for an excuse why you can or you can't. I am encouraging you to move into prayer and fasting this year. Amen. The very on start of this year, I, I'm not coming to you telling you, hey, you fast Monday, you fast Tuesday. Those are great things to him to know to do good and do it that not to him it is sin. You know what you need to do. You know what you should be doing. I'm going to ask you to go above and beyond what you did last year. I'm going to ask you to fast more this year. I told my wife I, 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 I'm, in a, I'm in a critical state of health in some aspects because I, I'm having some, uh, some issues with my eating habits and, that, and, and, uh, and, and some certain demands that, that are, are changing. I said, I am, I am challenged. I have, man, when I was younger, it was nothing to fast 21 days straight. Amen. It was nothing to go on weeks fast continually, just several times during the year. Amen. And uh, my, my method of fasting may have to change. I'm going to try everything I can. Amen. But fasting is not only fasting uh, uh, without no food at all from one particular item or all foods. There are methods of fasting that you can take. Amen. If, if you're a Coke lover, just put the Coke down for a week. If you're an internet lover, put the internet down for a week. Now, I do encourage you to abstain, abstain from some foods if you can. Try to develop that in your body. To me, that is a very one of the great fa uh, phases of fasting that uh, have a lot of benefits and a lot of effects. Amen. But I do want you to also be uh, conscientious of your health in doing so. I was not so wise in fasting. Uh, I, I went cold turkey on long fast and I broke them with ribeyes and, and uh, pork chops and some boudin and some cracklings. I was not wise. Okay, there is wisdom in your spirituality that you have to, to I couldn't do that now. <laughs> I couldn't do that now. So I'm encouraging you as a congregation and as your relationship with God. Amen. If you want more of God, seek God. If you want more of God, flirt with God. If you want more of God, pursue God in your relationship with God. And so uh, if, if, if you've obtained all, would you see me after church and please give me the ingredients so we can pass that around. But uh, if you're like me, we're striving for perfection and to increase our walk with God and our spiritual sensitivity, then I'm going to ask you to do what you can family prayer meeting tomorrow night amen if you don't you say well we're, we're worried about the virus and all that just keep your distance wear, wear a covering if you feel safe about that wear a mask if you feel safe bring an oxygen bottle I don't care what you do but try to be at the house of God for prayer there are many rooms that we you can pray in we're not going to critique you we're not going to make fun if I've got a little problem I'm going to pull away from you guys and I'm going to pray away from you uh, so, so, but that's not an excuse for us not to join together and to accomplish spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare that we need so desperately. We need so desperately. So I hope that you take yourself by the nap of the neck and shake yourself this year. You've done great last year. We've done great. You're doing great now, but we can do better. Turn to your neighbor and say, you really can do better. I know you. You can do better. There you go. There you go. Praise God. You have your Bibles. I'm directing your attention to two passages of Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. Then Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Amen. Two memorial verses and memorable verses that I believe are uh, very crucial to the body of Christ that we can comprehend, that we can put into our heart and to understand. I want to try to be uh, clear in the settings because I do believe that we misconstrue how living for God ought to be. Amen. When you live for God, it does not mean that all your problems vanish. Let me say that again. 
Just because you live for God doesn't mean you don't have problems. Amen. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to have a little bit more problems. Amen. But he keeps us. He protects us. And I am so grateful for the help of the Lord. Verse 18, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, they didn't tell me any different when I received the Holy Ghost. I was seeking for the will of God for a wife. I was seeking the will of God for my ministry. Those are the things that you should seek God with. But I missed this part. This part has added tremendous value to my life in learning to transition and to convert every incident in life into thanksgiving. He said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Did you get that? Some of you look like a deer caught in the headlights right now. <laughs> this is the will of God concerning you. Not the pastor, but for the pastor. Not the Sunday school teacher, but for the Sunday school teacher. This is for the congregation and the leadership, the will of God. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, Hezekiah finds himself pinning around B.C. 715, possibly 686, in those parameters. And he says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let me, if you miss my sermon and you check out, you punch the time clock right before I start preaching this morning. Let me tell you today that God is capable of keeping you into your, in your disaster. God is capable of keeping you in your disaster. On my way to church, I had prayed this morning, prayed on my way to church, and prayed when I got to church, and I still didn't pray enough because you can't pray enough. And I asked the Lord on the way to church, I said, God, I'm asking you to help me to compress any desire. I know that I have to be a provider. I know that there are some things that are, that are important to go further. But help me to compress my strong excitement and my strong desire for the things of this world. And help me to build my desire for the kingdom of God. That is my passion. That is my prayer. And that is my call of duty and my responsibility. I want to preach to you this morning on the subject count your blessings count your blessings if you could put your bible down and would you help me go to the lord for just a moment in prayer this morning god we need you we need your touch we need your strength today we need your anointing the very things that are set before us god we come boldly to the throne room of grace today Lord, we're asking for your help, your favor, and your strength. We ask for the touch of the Holy Ghost, God, to move in this place today. Open our minds to receive. Lord, shift us in our priorities today. Help us to comprehend the will of God for our lives today. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands into the Lord? As you were seated today, Brother Jeff, you and uh, Brother Duvall would help me this morning contribute, pass those out on each side. I would be grateful. The Chamber of Commerce invited a pastor to offer up the blessings at the banquet honoring elected officials. The master of ceremonies, however, forgot to call for the prayer and did not discover his mistake until the meal was nearly over. 
He was embarrassed, of course, but he asked the preacher if he would pray anyhow. And I'm perturbed by the slight. The minister rose up and he said, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. It is our responsibility as constituents of the kingdom of God. It is our obligation in our walk with God to give glory unto God in all things. It is not only when the good, the great, the positive, and the effective knock upon our spiritual door and we open the door up and we are enlightened by the magnificence of God and what he has done. I bring to you this morning from our text of the Apostle Paul that writes around 50, 51 common error that he begins to pin to the church. Let me inform you this morning that it is not at the apex of victory that the Thessalonica church receives the instructions of the Apostle Paul to pin such heavy burdens upon the church. As a matter of fact, the church had just lost. They just buried. The church had been under persecution. The church was probably not the painting that uh, would reach the level of popularity by expressing the greatness of this particular church that the Apostle Paul is pinning to in his writings. The church had been through it. They had been wrung out, if you please. The church of the Thessalonians have found themselves oppressed by circumstances that had overlooked them from the left and the right. It was hard when they gathered. It was tough to create and generate a level of enthusiasm, excitement, and momentum. After all, it probably had a mere reflection of what we see in the mirror of 2020. It is a place that the church found herself Yet, it did not matter where she was and what she was experiencing. It did not matter how full the pantries were or empty. It did not matter how warm or cold the home, the climate was. It was the instructions God had for his church through the man of God. As he suggested and as he commanded to the Thessalonican church, in all things give thanks. He began to instruct them as me and you could identify with that we are to give God glory in the good and in the bad. We are to give God when we feel our relationships blossoming or depleting. We are to give God thanks when the house of God is full or when it is half full, we are to give God praise and glory and thanksgiving when we wake up and we are achy and we are hurting and we are feverish and we are coughing and we are weak and we are sick. We are to give God thanks in all things of your life. In 1897, Johnson uh, Johnson Oatman wrote in his most beloved hymn of all, Count your blessings. Listen to the lyrics of that song. When upon life's bellows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, think all is lost. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surpass you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings and see what God has done. Count your blessings and name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See 
what God has done in your life. I challenge this great church, amen, to stop in the midst of your trials and your storms and your dilemmas of life. I challenge this great body of Christ to take pen and paper and begin to write beyond the darkness that you cannot see light and beyond the heaviness that you cannot see lightness. I challenge you to count your blessings one by one and see what the Lord has done for you. I do believe today that there is power in thanksgiving. I do believe today that there are multiple blessings that come when you have a spirit of thanksgiving upon you. I, I recently made a trip to South Carolina to pick up a vehicle that, uh, that I purchased. And uh, oftentimes I, I can see some of the damage because I specialize. I'm kind of like my father. Amen. I buy, I buy damaged and handicapped equipment. Amen. I, I sometimes can see the damage of, of the vehicle, but uh, uh, oftentimes there are hidden things that I do not see. And I'm glad that they are hidden to me because if they were not hidden and I would see all of the damage, I would not buy the vehicle. And if I did not buy the vehicle, I wouldn't repair the vehicle and sell the p vehicle and make a profit off of the vehicle. So sometimes it's good not to see everything in your life. I, I was driving, and uh, it was, it, it's a 2020 vehicle that only had a few hundred miles on it. And uh, I, I, I had observed the vehicle, picked it up, and loaded it up, got it all tied down, and, and uh, looked around. And I, I began to drive off and thank the Lord. There was some damage that I did not see. Amen. And so I began to thank the Lord because... Uh, I was concerned that maybe there would be some wheel damage. There was no wheel damage. I was concerned that there would be some interior damage, and there was no interior damage. And so in the midst of uh, missing my evaluation in my business, that I oftentimes do, and as I said, thank God that I missed the evaluation because I wouldn't buy anything if I saw everything. Amen. I begin to give God thanks for what I could find good that I did not expect to be good. I challenge this great audience today to look around your life. Amen. You may find a place where you want to complain about your job, but I want to encourage you today to look around and find things that you can thank God for about your job. Amen. You may uh, look around in your home and find things that you cannot uh, uh, appreciate as great. Not everybody can be married to a perfect wife. Of course, that only comes when she has a perfect husband like me. And uh, that helps out a lot. Amen. But uh, when you begin to look around in your home, amen. We're not perfect, by the way. Let me clarify that just in case you're thinking that. <laughs> We're far from it. <laughs> amen. Somebody said you're an angel. I said sometimes fallen. <laughs> Amen. But you got to learn to thank God in where you are at. Amen. You will always find a tipping of the scale in your life. But if you can create a, a mentality, if you can create a mindset to give God thanks in the areas that you are in, in the midst of the twist and the turn and the wounds and the broken and the bruises that you are seeing and evaluating in life. There's got to be a spot somewhere that you can thank God for the goodness of the Lord. There's got to be something in your situation that you can give glory and praise unto the Lord. Quaison Tom, once of the uh, Archbishop of Constantinopolia, and then he drove into exile when he was reigning in his throne. He was persecuted and he was despised, dried and driven far away from the splendor of his capital. He finds himself away from his comforts and his honors, which he had enjoyed frequently. In the conclusion of facing life's end, in the midst of his death, he said it this way, Glory to God in all things. 
I want to tell you today that life, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but life is not always going to navigate as planned. Amen. Life is not always going to give you exactly what you are hoping for and expecting. There are some twists and some turns that occur in your life. There are some hardships that happen in your walk even though you are living for God. But I want to challenge you today to find areas in your life where you can be thankful and give glory and give honor unto God. In all things, give thanks. It is the will of God concerning your life. I, I hope that this church can somehow launch from this brand new year that has given us. Not that we would have multitudes of riches. That's not what I'm thanking God for. Not that we would be overwhelmed that we'd have to build another building. That's not what I'm thanking God for. But that I can find my place in everyday life. That on a Monday I could stand and say, God, I want to give you thanks for a place to worship. No matter what, I want to thank you, Lord. I want to give you glory and honor. Thank you, God, for my suit. Thank you, Lord, for my transportation. Thank you, Lord, that I had gas that I didn't have to walk to church. It is easy to miss the mark. It is easy for us to say, hey, look what's not happening in our lives. In court commentary, when I begin to study this particular passage, amen, he began to uh, discuss in everything to give thanks. For this reason that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Therefore, every occurrence may be a uh, subject or gratitude of thanksgiving that would fulfill each and every one of us. While you live to God in prosperity, and this is what I like, and adversity will be equal helpful to you. When you live for God in prosperity and in adversity, they will be equally helpful to you. Thank God for the storm that balanced my life. Thank God for the trouble that caused me to dig and to search deep down to find the pathways of God. Thank God that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon me, not when I was celebrating the victories by all of my neighbors, but while I was in my defeats and in my dilemmas and in my discouragement, trying to lick my own wounds that I could find in my spirit that the Word of God says, give thanks in all things. This is what the will of God is for you today. I want to tell every church family member here today, I want to tell our guests here today, amen, in all all things give thanks when you're pulling yourself up to stand and there's some brand new aches and pains. You ought to thank God that you've got some property. You need to thank God that you have the strength to get out of that chair by your own might and your own power. Somebody ought to be thankful that they've got water that is running in their home. Somebody ought to be thankful that they can flip a switch and they say, oh God, I thank you today for your blessings and your power in my life well on a short term mission trip Reverend Jack Hinton was leading worship at a leper colony on the island of Tobago a woman who had been facing away from the pulpit all of a sudden decided that she would turn to face the audience it was the most hideous face I had ever seen Hinton said, the woman's nose and ear were entirely gone. She lifted a fingerless hand in the air, and she asked this question. Can we sing, count your many blessings? Overcome with emotions, Hilton left the service. He was followed by one of the team members who said, I guess you will never be able to sing that song again. And his reply was, yes, I will. But I will never be able to sing it the same way again because he understood the blessings of life. While life can blacken the eye 
And while life can cripple the limb, it cannot take your ability to give thanks unto God. I want to challenge you today. Amen. While many on the streets and in our homes and in our family gatherings and in our churches have put behind us the year of 2020, many that declare bitterness for the year, many declare defeat for the year, but I stand and proclaim that 2020 was a year of tremendous victory for our country. Explain and expound if you please. In 2020, we had more families gather at the dinner table that had been absent at all the previous years that have gone by. In 2020, there were more game boards that were brought to the table with family activity and interaction. With 2020, there were crafts that were never attempted before that were tried. In 2020, there was conversations that dads had never had with his children, now forced by the pandemic to have a time of interaction with his children. There was a time in 2020 that we were discouraged and bitter, but yet we understood that God here, now, and the very threshold of 2021, we made it even though we had to cancel some church services. My emphasis are not on canceling church services. I hope we don't have to ever have to cancel another church service again. But it still shows me that God can keep me in the adversities of life. That God can keep me in the storms of life. And I, I want you to hear this preacher today. You will not advance no distant in your spiritual life by licking your wounds, by elevating your conversations of defeat. But I want to tell you that if you can find a little crack in a crevice that you can say, hey, hey, look what the Lord has done for me. Hey, Amen. I feel better today. I didn't cough this morning. I've got strength in my body today. I was able to get out of bed sick but more well than I was sick today. And I just lift up my hands and say, thank God for his provision. Thank God for his keeping me. Thank God for his protection upon me. I want to tell you today that if you've got a little money, you ought to thank God today. If you're paying your bills, you ought to rejoice today. For God is good. And we give him thanks because it is the will of God concerning you're alive. Oh, clap your hands into the Lord this morning. One writer said, if you have food in the refrigerator, clothes on your back, and a roof over your head and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of this world. If you have money in the bank, if you have money in your purse or your wallet, if you have spare change that is laying around anywhere in your home, amen, that you are more blessed, amen, that you are in the top 8% of the world's wealth. 8% of the wealthiest people in the world are in my church. I thank God today. If you woke up this morning more health than illness, you are more blessed than a million who will not survive this week. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pangs of starvation, you are ahead of 500 million people in the world. If you can attend church meetings without fear of harassment, arrest, torture, or death, you are more blessed than 3 billion people in the world. I want to tell this church today, you are blessed of the Lord. You are blessed of the Lord. Amen. When's the last time 
that you walked around thanking God for the blessings. When's the last time you put on an outfit and said, Oh, God, I thank you for this outfit. It might be a little snug right now because you overblessed me with the pantry, but I thank you for the outfit, God. I thank you for shoes. I was thinking as I put my shoes on this morning, amen, they're, they're relatively new, maybe a year. I count that new. You may not. Amen. I drive new cars. If they're five years or, 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 or uh, newer, then they're new, they're new cars. And so I'm so thankful and so blessed. But I was putting my shoes on this morning, and I was thinking they're about a year old because I got them with 65% and an additional 50% off of the 65% at dealers last year. And I was thinking if I only wear them on Sundays and I wear them every Sunday in the year, man, I can get a lot of mileage out. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, number one, for the deal of letting me find some pair of good shoes, name brand shoes, and paying pennies on the dollar for. And thank you, Lord, for letting me have a pair of shoes that look good, that are comfortable, and that are going to last me a little while. And so there has got to be a shift here. Oh, my God. Hear me, church, today. Amen. Could it be that your, your finances are struggling because you're not giving God any praise and any thanksgiving for the good? Amen. Yet could it be? that you're struggling to where you look and oh this is what I have oh, oh God help me I got to pay my tithings today I got to give some offering today I don't know how I'm going to do this no friend there's got to be a spirit of thanksgiving the church was not excelling and the church was not thriving in Thessalonica the church was struggling but the apostle Paul said in all things give thanks this is the will of God concerning your life one writer said, dance, smile, giggle, marvel, trust, hope, love, wish, believe. Most of all, enjoy every moment of the journey and appreciate where you are at the moment instead of always focusing on how far you have to go. Everyone who is alive can find something to be grateful for today. For if they look for it, they can find it. If you are among the few that can't find anything, start with the fact that you are alive and continue from there. Start with the fact that you have breath in your body today and that you have some limbs that you can move on your body you have eyes that most of us, I don't know anyone that is completely blind today. I'm pretty close. Uh, not, not really, but uh, losing sight some. Uh, but, but we've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. We've got strength. How many of you are able to, to, to fix your own food? Raise your hand. How many of you are able today to put your own shoes on today if you want to? Some of you are lazy and make your wife do it for you. <laughs> Amen. 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 How many of you are able to go out in the yard and to listen to the chirping of the birds and to look at the trees that God created and look at the flowers that he created and begin to get away from all of the technology and to get away from all of the cars that you don't have and the houses that you never built and the clothes that you never purchased and to be able to stand and give God glory. Oh, thank you, God, for the blessings of the Lord because these ears are able able to hear nature and all of the sounds of nature, the dogs that are barking and the birds that are chirping. I'm so thankful today, God, and I can hear the crashing of the waves upon the seashore. I'm telling you, you are blessed today, church. Yes, you've got struggles. Yes, you've got problems. Yes, you've had dark times, but I want to tell you that in all things, give thanks unto God. This is the will of God concerning your life. As we stand this morning, it was Jesus who went through Jerusalem and was passing in the midst of Samaria and Galilee. As he entered, the Bible says, into a certain village, there, there met him ten. You'll remember the story and remember it well. There were 10 men that met Jesus. These 10 men had leprosy. These 10 men obviously 
had heard of the fame of Jesus. They did not have to be given a Bible study. They instantly knew who he was. And so they petitioned the Lord to touch them. As they made their requests known unto God. You ought to get that in the Bible. You'll underline it when you get there in your Bible reading further down the year. Make your requests known unto God. When they made their requests known to the Lord, Jesus told them, you know, it's amazing. Our, our, our perception of how things ought to be. The King of kings and the Lord of lords didn't do it the way that I would have done it. And, 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 and instead of us just bumping and banging and, and God bless you, you're healed and going your way and all, Jesus tells them to do something. He tells the ten lepers that have requested of him to heal. They didn't shake, bump, they didn't run. I don't even think that he laid his hands on them. Could have. But he tells them to go and show themselves to the priest. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that the priest his report of the ten lepers were a good report. I'm positive by the attitude of ten percent. Because one of the gentlemen that were standing for healing that went show himself to the priest. I don't know how far he had to run. I don't know how much traveling he had to do. I don't know how much jogging he had to do to catch up to where Jesus was because Je the Bible says he was passing through. So he was mobile and he was on move. But he comes to where Jesus is and he falls down. A form of recognition of divine worship. He falls down on his face before the Lord. And he gives thanksgiving unto the Lord. I want you to watch what happens because something very powerful took place. First, Jesus acknowledges that not 100% are going to be willing to participate. So he says, what? We're not there, 10 of y'all? Where, where's the other nine that I healed? But he, he switches gears, you know, he's, he's you know, pastors. I, I get my example from Jesus. That's why I chase rabbits in the pulpit because he kind of goes out and he comes right back and he picks up and he moves on and, and so I want to be like Jesus and he comes back to the one that came giving thanks giving and he does something just phenomenal that history that the medical doctors could not do while the other nine had their leprosy stopped. While the other nine had leprosy that, that was no longer in the body, they were still marked by the disease. But Jesus does something to the one. The Bible says he gave him another miracle. be made whole. In other words, the ear that fell off, the finger that fell off, I don't know, the, the nose that deteriorated, the toe that disappeared. Instantly, the man not only had his first miracle by meeting the master, but he had his second miracle by giving thanks. If I can leave you with something this morning, 
there's more power in thanksgiving than there is in complaining If you can program yourself to quit looking what broke and program yourself to thinking, God, that you had something that could break. If you can program yourself to thinking, God, that you had an outfit instead of looking out at the outfit that had a stain on it like I did this morning. Not this one, so don't look for it. Everybody's like. You can find the goodness of God in your own prosperity. I'm going to tell you what I want to happen this year. Some folks are waiting, and God's desiring to advance you. There are some folks that God's waiting to make whole this year. You've been healed, but there are some things that God wants to put back on you. There's some add-ons that God wants to give to you this year. But you're going to have to get to a place of not complaining. You're going to have to get to a place of coming to the house of God and say, man, Lord, look how many showed up today. After all the phone calls, I wasn't feeling so peachy. (laughs) And then I remember my message, oh, no, not today, God. If we got two or three, we're going to be thankful and we're going to worship the Lord and we're going to have church and we're going to accomplish your will and your plan today in this assembly. You see, you can have the benefits of being financially blessed or you can have the benefits of having them cut off. If, if there's something that my family has learned to do well, we have learned to be thankful. And I'm going to tell you one reason why we learn to be thankful because me and that little fine lady right there, we didn't always live in a nice house. We lived in an old dilapidated travel trailer where we gave, we never figured it out if it was a, if it was a, a, a rat, a coon, or a squirrel. But we gave him his side of the trailer and we took our side of the trailer. So Brooklyn, before you get too excited where you came from, your crib was on the side of the coon. No, not really. We, we, we. In that dilapidated travel trailer that leaked, mold, you name it. You say, oh, Brother Gotro, you shouldn't live in that kind of stuff. Well, you give me a nicer house, I'd have lived in it, but I'd have lived in what I had. And we gave thanks for it that we found that trailer at a garage sale for 20 something hundred dollars. And we lived in it till we could do a little bit better. And we sold that and made a little money off of it. God blessed us. We disclosed everything that was. And the guy that bought it was wanting it for a camp. And he was tickled pink or green or whatever color. He was tickled. And God blessed us. I bid on another travel trailer. We were traveling. And, and I said, we, we really need something nice. Man, we were buddy we hit the we hit it big we we bought us a we bought us a fifth wheel travel trailer i bought the truck that i had to rebuild the diesel engine to pull the trailer remember that <laughs> you see they're blessings but you gotta you gotta you gotta find the place to be thankful for and uh the guy said i don't need the money sir he said just pay me whenever you want i'll hold a title i don't care if it's 10 years 20 years just take the trailer and pay me whenever you want and so man that was a blessing so we didn't pay him the whole thing I think we gave him ten thousand dollars and uh then we sold it and before we got ready to sell it we sold it for a profit God helped us we prayed over it God blessed us with it and uh we paid it off got the title met the gentleman he was from another state thank the Lord we bought that that truck man I'd never built a diesel engine before them things are heavy to work on <laughs> brother Walburn man I don't know how you do it day in and out them things are hard work that's hard I'd make a man out of you or, or a mouse or something out of you when it's all said and done and God blessed us my wife was so I'm trying to help somebody today we gotten down on our look 
evangelistic field was slowing down and I wasn't preaching out as much and we were preaching sometimes to places that it was costing us to be there because it wasn't covering all the expenses of having to travel and we weren't trying to complain we just knew you just can't continue that way and uh man bought a car tried to fix it up to sell and it kept dying out and my wife we, we were in a bad way we were in a bad way things were breaking down things were not going good we we and uh we, we kept thanking God because we knew that God had his hand on our lives. It was the shift. It was the shift that put us where we were at. It's not what we wanted. We didn't plan it. I knew, I, I, we knew we were going to plan a church someday. We did not know where. We were not positive. God just moved everything through. Through all the trouble, God was pushing us into position. Did you get that? Through all the trouble... God was pushing us in the right position. Oh, we're blessed beyond measure. I say that not boasting today. I say that with the spirit of thanksgiving because we have learned to be a blessing, not only to be blessed. There are some of you here today that you might have not gotten there yet. You might still be stuck sharing the trailer with the raccoon. But if you will give God thanks where you are at, if you will give God thanks where you are at, wake up with a with a spirit of thanksgiving every day, looking through your life, oh, thank you, God. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my kids. They're perfect, God. They're perfect, they're perfect kids, except a couple of areas we're working on. But we're gonna give you thanks, God. Is there room for improvement? Because this is the will of God, church. This is the will of God concerning your life. Somebody said, God's not going to put you on the top. I'm just taking my time. I just feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, God's not going to put you on the top because you don't know how to handle the top when you miss all the in-betweens. You got to climb the ladder to have an appreciation and the experience of where you are positioned at so you can build the character, so you can build the confidence, so you can build the know how, so you can have the wisdom and the knowledge as you graduate. That's why folks that get rich overnight, that they're poor overnight. Because they, they don't know how to handle, they, never, they didn't go through the process and the growth period some of you God is trying to take you to some places this year if you will find a spirit of thanksgiving you say Lord I want the will of God the will of God is in in thanksgiving now, I'm opening up the altars this morning I, I, I hope that you'll come I hope that you'll come this morning and that you'll ask God to shift you you think all of the problems that are going on, it, it, uh, you're blaming the devil. Can I tell you that the devil doesn't have that authority unless God grants it? Some of you ought to really come seeking God with the heart of heaviness because God's trying to transition you to greatness. God's trying to shift you into a place of goodness and mercy and blessings. But in the process of it all, you're going to have to go through some things. You're going to have to go through some storms. You're going to have to weather some things. There's got to be rain if you're going to have a crop. There's got to be, there's got to be some, some winds and some storms. If the trees are going to have strength and become beneficial, they're going to have to go through some things in life. Church, you're going to have to go through some things in life amen, to be what God has called you to be and to be able to de de develop into the maturity that God is trying to develop you into. I wonder if you could thank God for your troubles. It's easy to thank God for the good stuff. I wonder if you could thank God for the bitter stuff. I wonder if you could thank God for the gaps in your life where you don't understand.